Mr. Fairbeck, thank you for joining us on uh, Congress Media Box. Uh, your report on uh, guidelines for preventing radicalization uh, just uh, adopted in the Congress uh, 29th session. First of all, we congratulate you for this report because it's an important report that you mention uh, very important details uh, which uh, we would like to also discuss in our Media Box. First, I would like to start with the definition of the radicalization. So what we should, under, what we should understand for the uh, term radicalization? Well, in fact, we discuss about people who are extremely isolated, who get thoughts of uh, aggression and do violent things against our society. Mm -hmm. This is not only a debate about Islam. Some people try to make it a debate on Islam. It's not a debate on Islam. Mm -hmm. It's a debate on people who radicalize, who is are isolated in society and become aggressive towards the society, aggressive towards individuals, aggressive towards groups or aggressive towards the society as a whole. We've seen the example of utopia in Norway, we've seen the examples in the Middle East, but there are examples in almost all countries. In Russia there are examples, in Turkey there are examples. Uh, and these kinds of uh, radicalization within the society, that's what's at stake at this agenda. And to be more precise, what could you say about the reasons that contribute to individuals becoming radicalized? Society is becoming more and more complex and we see that within society the extremes become, become more and more extreme. Mm -hmm. Also in terms of economics but also in terms of social relations. Mm -hmm. And we see that on the wrong side of the extremes people become so extremely isolated that they show this kind of behavior. This also accounts for, for total groups. This accounts for some of the countries, mm -hmm. countries that disintegrate because the groups do not interfere with each other anymore. They have no social contacts and they become extremists, extremists or even start fighting civil wars. And on your report, it's also important that you mentioned three complementary approach mm -hmm. as a response to radicalization. So could you please more detail this uh, approach? Um, well, we have the approach of the, of the educa education. Mm -hmm. We have to understand and to learn ourselves mm -hmm. what's happening. And then we have to explain and understand to bring it to the other people mm -hmm. in society so they will understand and they will act to it. We are very much worried that we as, uh, as people in a, in a how do you say, responsible position as governors or as mayors, uh, we do not cooperate enough, that's what this project is also about. We must organize networks, uh, Mr. Pinto used the word bridges. We must build bridges between all these competences so we can work together on a large scale and exchange experiences. That's what's very important what we will do. Of course the Council of Europe cannot solve everything. We are only part of a large game of chess and there are many other players on the board. But we are a player too and what we will do is support the local and regional authorities in this development, support them with knowledge, support them with networks and mm -hmm. actively bring knowledge into this debate so they will know what to do. Uh, so when we discuss this uh, question, especially in the Congress session, the first question that we ask, uh, what can local authorities do more, specifically local authorities, regional authorities or cities, to be more uh, precise, to prevent radicalization? Yes, if, if we look to the, the basics, one of the main messages is be sure you know the people who live in your city. Mm. Know them, visit with them, talk with them, so exclusion doesn't, doesn't occur. Uh, but too often exclusion occurs, especially in the larger cities. It's not easy for a mayor to have contact with everybody. And then you get exclusion, forms of exclusion. But also we see it also happen in the smaller cities where people are excluded in such an extreme way that they radicalize, individuals radicalize in an extreme way. And that's the first thing we must learn to do better. We don't do it good enough. At the same time, we must d develop the tools. If you notice that people do radicalize, then what you do you do? You cannot only put them in prison. In general, we have the experience that people that were brought to prison, they even radicalize more in prison. And when they come out, it's worse than when they came, went in. Mm -hmm. So there's more at stake, but we have to learn what to do and how to do it. And that's what this project is about also. Thank you for all your contributions, Mr. Fairbeck. Thank you. Thank you.